Hey, Bio Nerdlings, welcome back. In this podcast, we're going to be looking at sexual selection. Let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start you guys off with a quote from none other than Charles Darwin about sexual selection. So he stated, The sexual struggle is of two kinds. In the one, it is between individuals of the same sex, generally the males, in order to drive away or kill their rivals. The females remaining passive, whilst in the other, the struggle is likewise between the individuals of the same sex in order to excite or charm those of the opposite sex, generally the females, put on some mascara and bat your eyes, which no longer remain passive, but select the more agreeable partners. So there are two main types of sexual selection. We have intrasexual, so intra with an A, and we have inter with an E sexual selection. So intrasexual selection is within the same sex. So that means individuals of one sex are competing directly with each other for mates of the opposite sex. And males are famous for this. You ever see two guys fighting in the hallway? Sometimes it's girls, isn't it? Most of the time in high school it's girls. But anyways, in the animal kingdom, aside from us, most of the time the males are constantly fighting. So some of the examples, you have these um, giraffes right here necking and not the good kind. Uh, some vicious looking lemurs. And uh, we also have deer. Um, you know, deer, uh, a lot of the other different types of mammals that have, you know, antlers or horns, they're using those to clash with each other and fight for a mate. Um, same thing with lots of seal species, the males are going to fight, and that exerts a lot of energy, and a lot of times the males actually become injured in the process, so they actually lose out energetically. But the biggest, baddest male is the one who typically wins, so the females are like, yeah, I want that guy. He beat up all those other guys over there. So that's what happens when there is intrasexual selection. And again, that's typically the males. The second type of sexual selection is going to be intersexual selection. And those are individuals of one sex being choosy. These often are females, which apparently my female dog has um, decided to make an appearance. Say hello, Emma. Um, those are often females that select mates based on their showiness. So the female wants a hot guy, basically, and this is very famous in the bird realm. So many male birds are going to be very colorful, they're going to be bright, they're going to be singing beautiful songs and fluffing their feathers and dancing around like crazy because they want to attract the female. And she's going to choose whichever male she likes best. It might be his feathers, might be his song, might be his little dance, um, but she's going to be able to be choosy about that. So like I was saying, you know, birds are kind of a great example of this. So for example, the male peacock has beautiful plumage of feathers. Uh, so the male peacock, you know, when it's that time, he'll kind of whoosh, spreads out all of his feathers and does his little strut, does his weird little peacock call, which I'm not even going to attempt. Uh, and, you know, and the females are kind of looking around. She's like, hey, you got some nice feathers. And then, you know, she might look around and be like, he's a little scrappy or yeah and then you know typically the female will choose the male peacock with the biggest most beautiful plume of feathers now that actually puts him at a disadvantage because they're very very heavy so it's hard for him to fly he has to exert a lot more energy um, it can pose a survival threat for him as far as predators and things like that as well but the benefits for him of spreading his you know genes into the gene pool outweigh the cost. So female birds, again, of many species, choose the male. Males are typically more showy than the females because they're trying to attract a mate. Uh, males have a selective advantage even though if they're more showy, they're more susceptible to predators. But like I said, for them, the benefit of being able to mate with those females outweighs the cost of being more visible to predators. So most of the time, females of the bird species are actually very drab. They blend into their surroundings. And they do that because they're the ones that are typically caring for their young. They don't want to have bright green and orange and red feathers and attract predators to their nests. They want to be very, you know, earthy colors or whatever type of 
color the environment that they live in is. That way they blend in and it allows them to, you know, not get caught by predators and things like that. Whereas the males, again, are going to be really flashy, really showy, because they're trying to attract the females. So a form of sexual selection in which individuals with certain inherited characteristics are more likely than others to obtain mates, it can result in sexual dimorphism, meaning that there's a huge difference in the size of the female versus the male. Uh, one of the most, for me, one of the most you know, common examples that pops to my mind are sperm whales. The male sperm whales are just enormous, so are the females, but I mean the males are just huge, massive, and the females are much, much smaller. Uh, and you can see that right here in this species of bird, uh, and then deer, not quite so much in the deer, but you can see it a lot more in the bird. The female's obviously a lot more drab in color. Uh, she's also much smaller than the male. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about different types of sexual selection. This is the Queen Nerdling signing out for now. Stay nerdy till next time.